one of the major silent killers. Understanding blood pressure. What is blood pressure? What are systolic and diastolic blood pressures? Why blood pressure is important? Classification of blood pressure. Factors that influence blood pressure. Risk factors for hypertension. And types of hypertension. What is blood pressure? Blood pressure is the force of blood against the walls of arteries, as the heart pumps it throughout the body. It is measured in millimeters of mercury, and consists of two numbers, systolic pressure and diastolic pressure. What are systolic and diastolic blood pressures? Systolic blood pressure is the top number and represents the pressure in the arteries when the heart contracts and pumps blood. It is the highest pressure reached in the arteries during each contraction. Whereas diastolic blood pressure is the bottom number and represents the pressure in the arteries when the heart is at rest between contractions. It is the lowest pressure reached in the arteries between each contraction. Why is blood pressure important? When blood pressure is within a normal range, it means that the heart is able to pump blood efficiently, and the blood vessels are able to transport blood throughout the body, without undue stress or strain. This helps to maintain adequate blood flow to all the organs and tissues in the body, which is essential for their proper functioning. In contrast, if blood pressure is consistently too high or too low, it can put stress on the cardiovascular system. High blood pressure in particular, increases the risk of serious health problems such as heart disease, stroke, kidney disease, and even death. Classification of blood pressure Internal factors that influence blood pressure. Cardiac output. Volume of circulating blood. Blood vessel tone and elasticity. Peripheral vascular resistance. Viscosity of blood. Renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. An autonomic nervous system. Blood pressure increases with increased cardiac output, volume of blood, rigidity of vessel walls, peripheral vascular resistance, viscosity of blood, and vice versa. Cardiac output. Cardiac output is the amount of blood pumped by the heart per minute. It represents the overall effectiveness of the heart in delivering oxygenated blood to the body's tissues. Cardiac output is determined by two primary factors heart rate, and stroke volume. Heart rate is, the number of times the heart beats per minute. It is influenced by factors, such as physical activity, stress, hormonal changes, and autonomic nervous system regulation. Stroke volume is the amount of blood, ejected by the left ventricle of the heart, with each contraction. It is influenced by factors, such as preload, which is the amount of blood returning to the heart, the force of contraction of the heart muscle, and afterload, which is the resistance against which the heart pumps blood. If you like the content, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Volume of blood. When blood volume increases in conditions like, fluid retention or excessive salt intake, the pressure on the blood vessel walls increases, resulting in higher blood pressure. Conversely, a decrease in blood volume, such as from dehydration or bleeding, can lead to lower blood pressure. Rigidity of vessel walls. The elasticity of the vessel walls allows them to expand and contract, in response to changes in blood volume, and maintain optimal blood pressure levels. Loss of elasticity and increased stiffness of arterial walls can lead to hypertension. Peripheral vascular resistance. Peripheral resistance is the resistance encountered by blood flow in the smaller arteries and arterioles. Factors such as the diameter of blood vessels, viscosity of blood, and the presence of any obstructions affect peripheral resistance. Increased resistance raises blood pressure. Viscosity of blood. Viscosity is the thickness or stickiness of the blood which affects its ability to flow smoothly through the blood vessels. 
Blood viscosity is primarily determined by the concentration of red blood cells, the presence of proteins and other components in the plasma. High blood viscosity increases the resistance to blood flow, which in turn increases blood pressure. Renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system Renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system is a hormonal system involved in blood pressure regulation. The system is activated by several factors, including decreased blood pressure, low blood volume and sympathetic nervous system activity. Activation of this system can lead to vasoconstriction, sodium and water retention, and increased blood volume, all of which contribute to maintain blood pressure within a normal range. However, an overactive or dysregulated system can contribute to the development of high blood pressure. Autonomic Nervous System The autonomic nervous system is a part of the nervous system that controls involuntary bodily functions, such as heart rate, blood pressure, digestion, and respiration. It consists of two main branches, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is responsible for the fight or flight response, which is activated in response to stress or danger. When the system is activated, it causes an increase in heart rate, blood pressure, respiration and a decrease in digestion and other non-essential functions. Whereas, the parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for the rest and digest response, which is activated during periods of relaxation and rest. When this nervous system is activated, it causes a decrease in heart rate, blood pressure, and respiration, and an increase in digestion and other non-essential functions. The sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems work together to maintain a balance between the fight or flight and the rest and digest response. This balance is important for overall health and well-being, disruptions to this balance can contribute to a range of health problems. If you like the content, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Risk factors for hypertension Age Blood pressure tends to increase with age. The risk of developing hypertension is higher in individuals over the age of 60. Family history a family history of hypertension increases the likelihood of developing high blood pressure. If parents or close relatives have hypertension, the risk is higher. Obesity or overweight. Being overweight or obese puts extra strain on the cardiovascular system by the following ways, increasing blood volume, increasing peripheral resistance, insulin resistance, inflammatory response and sleep apnea, which leads to an increased risk of hypertension. Sedentary lifestyle Lack of regular physical activity and leading a sedentary lifestyle can contribute to high blood pressure. Tobacco use Active and passive smoking are major risk factor for hypertension and related health problems. Nicotine in cigarettes increases sympathetic activity and causes blood vessels to constrict. Tar and other chemicals in cigarettes damages the walls of blood vessels, making them more susceptible to plaque buildup and narrowing, leading to an increase in blood pressure. Excessive alcohol consumption Alcohol is a vasodilator, meaning it causes blood vessels to widen, leading to a decrease in blood pressure. However, over time, this effect can cause damage to the blood vessels, leading to an increase in blood pressure. Chronic stress when an individual experiences chronic stress, their body's stress response is activated on a continuous basis, leading to the release of stress hormones such as cortisol and adrenaline. Over time this can lead to cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, and weakened immune function. Chronic stress can also have negative effects on mental health, leading to anxiety, depression, and other mood disorders. Certain medical conditions diabetes, kidney disease, sleep apnea, and hormonal disorders can increase the risk of developing hypertension. Medications and supplements. Certain medications, such as nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, decongestants and some dietary supplements may raise blood pressure. There are mainly two types of hypertension. Essential hypertension and secondary hypertension. Additional hypertension types are isolated systolic hypertension, hypertensive crisis, and resistant hypertension. Essential hypertension. 
also known as primary or idiopathic hypertension, is a common form of high blood pressure that develops without a specific underlying cause. It is the most common type of hypertension, around 90% of the population worldwide has it. Essential hypertension often develops gradually over time, and it is typically asymptomatic in its early stages. If left untreated, it can lead to serious health complications. Secondary hypertension. Unlike primary hypertension, secondary hypertension is caused by an underlying medical condition or a specific factor, such as kidney diseases, hormonal disorders, sleep apnea, coarctation of the aorta, medications, and substances. Isolated systolic hypertension. When systolic pressure rises above 130, while the diastolic pressure stays near the normal range, below 90. This type of hypertension is most common in people over the age of 60, and is mainly caused by the loss of elasticity in the arteries. Like other types of high blood pressure, isolated systolic hypertension can raise your risk of heart attack, stroke, kidney disease, heart failure, and other health conditions. Additionally, studies found that, isolated systolic hypertension can increase the risk of heart disease and death in young adults too. Hypertensive crisis. It is a severe and potentially life-threatening form of high blood pressure. It is characterized by a rapid increase in systolic pressure above 180, and diastolic pressure above 120, that can cause damage to vital organs such as the brain, heart, kidneys, and eyes. Resistant hypertension. It is a type of high blood pressure that remains elevated, systolic more than 140 and diastolic more than 90, even after the use of three or more different types of blood pressure medications, typically including a diuretic. If you feel like you've absorbed the information and can explain it to someone else, then you've definitely understood the video about blood pressure. Take a moment to appreciate how much you've learned and understood. Please also watch our other video about how to reduce blood pressure naturally. Thank you for watching. Please check out the links in the description below for additional information and resources. Also don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this in the future. Thanks again for tuning in.